Hello everyone, my name is Mitchell Coleman. I'm the Conservation Science Director here at the Tejon Ranch Conservancy and today we are at the Panofsky Wilson Preserve, which is a little preserve that the Conservancy actually fee title owns on the north end of Tejon Ranch. It's a bit unusual for us. For those, uh, as we've talked about before, we're the land managers of Tejon Ranch. We manage the conservation easements. The 90% of the ranch is permanently conserved, but the Tejon Ranch Conservancy, we don't actually own any part of Tejon Ranch. This preserve is the one exception to that here at the Panofsky Wilson Preserve. It was donated to us back in 2015. And over the last number of years, we've done a number of different stewardship projects here. This is in the main stream course of Caliente Creek, which if you're driving on Highway 58 between Bakersfield and Tehachapi, it's just a hop, skip and a jump away from there. And this preserve has all kinds of really neat biological systems, of course, riparian vegetation, willows, poplars, also some upland vegetation, Bakersfield cactus, amongst other things. And recently we got a uh, grant from the Natural Resources Conservation Service to do some invasive plant treatment, mostly tamarisk, which is a very nasty, most pro probably the most nasty invasive tree in the Western US. It typically, it typically takes over waterways. It's a water stealer, does all sorts of things. There's all sorts of thought on what tamarisk does, different thoughts of how to manage it, depending on where you are, whether you're on the coast or here in inland California. But here in, in Kern County, uh, we are very fond on this part of the ranch getting rid of it. So we got this grant essentially to treat uh, tamarisk and other plants, invasive plants, over the next handful of years. Uh, so we're out here today doing that. And so to that end, uh, we have this pretty uh, simple technique. I'll let these two gentlemen explain uh, how we are going about treating these invasive plants. Sure. Okay, you want to go first or you want me to? Okay, I'll let you go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark Duffel and I'm a new volunteer with the Tone Ranch Conservancy. I like being outdoors. I like the, con the conservation efforts. The Tone Ranch itself is an amazing place with just so many things to see. And you know, uh, being greedy, it's really good for my mental health to be outside, be out where I don't really see, you know, other people. You can go all day and all that you see are your friends. So what we're doing is out here today, like Mitchell talked about, is this morning we've been working on removing uh, tamarisk. So that's what these stumps are here. And over here is a, is a stand that we haven't got to yet. And we're just basically having a good time. We're using a chainsaw. We have some pruning shears. We have Dick Taylor with his, his giant weed eater thing there. <laughs> and we're, we're removing this stuff. And then what's gonna happen is uh, before we leave, we'll come back here and we'll treat this with some chemical that's uh, biologically approved for this area in, in the creek bed that will kill these off so they won't come back. I know nothing about tamarisk except what the biologist and the other people have told me, cut those down, <laughs> don't cut those down. But really, it's, it's uh, you, you know, you think you're weed eating the ranch, okay? But we come out here, it's a very social uh, thing to do. We come out here, we visit, we have a good time. You do some physical labor and, you know, if you have an opportunity, you think it's something you would like to do, you can contact the, the Conservancy. There's dozens of different opportunities to help out. Dick Tate? All right. My name is Dick Taylor and I'm a volunteer with the Tejon Ranch Conservancy and as Mark and Mitchell have talked about, it is very rewarding to come out and do the kind of work we're doing uh, today here at Panofsky Wilson. Uh, at this preserve, we're actually making a sizable dent in this tamarisk. You can actually see part of the Caliente Creek uh, bed, uh, creek bed out here now. And uh, as Mark expanded upon it is from a purely selfish standpoint. Uh, coming out here and working with the Conservancy is to, to use an old term, uh, it's good for what ails you. And you come out here, yeah, you visit, you sweat. We use, uh, we're very safe around each other and with this power equipment, but it is um, rewarding to be able to make uh, a, a something that you can see that's, that is a, a visible, 
difference in the conservation efforts that, con that the Conservancy is charged with. And uh, again, as Mitchell and Mark pointed out, if this is something that may be of interest to you, I highly recommend this. And uh, you know, everybody's got their niche of what they want to do, and maybe one area of it's not your cup of tea, but there's some other things that you're going to think, you know what, this is good because I don't have to worry about a neighbor looking over my fence and tell me that he's tired of my ivy growing over his fence. You come out here and the tamarisks don't talk back to you. You have It's a one-way conversation, and it's you, and you defeat them, and then we make these big giant brush piles, and uh, they're going to go away someday, and we're going to make a difference in and, uh, and the uh, value, conservation value of this area. So again, if you're interested, or if you think you or your friends or family want to do it, uh, contact the Conservancy, and we'd love to have you out here, and uh, as the old saying goes, we'll see you out here on the ranch. A, a couple more things to say about the natural history of tamarisk. Actually, it's, I like the terminology of fighting. We were just joking. Uh, we were watching the new Lord of the Rings uh, TV show that came out, and we kind of were joking that uh, uh, doing stewardship work on tamarisk is kind of like fighting the hordes of Sauron, but uh, uh, but uh, that's just a silly nerd joke. Anyway, I thought I uh, would quickly uh, point out some uh, things about tamarisk. Um, so this is... There are... A number of different tamarisk species uh, that occur in California. This is the most widespread and ubiquitous. This is called tamarisk ramosissima, or tamarisk ramosissima. That's the Latin of it. And it is a fierce competitor. And what it does is it produces lots of seeds. We don't have any flowers right now, but it actually produces, for an invasive plant, it's quite attractive. It produces these really pretty, uh, purplish to pinkish flower plumes and thousands and thousands of seeds. Those seeds get in these ephemeral water courses, these creek systems that go dry during the summer. And then once there's a little bit of water, these seeds can just germinate in mass and basically establish monocultures, crowding out all of the other, well, native plants that should be occurring here. So the other natives in this case, we can see these are the very common uh, riparian uh, plants that uh, would occur here more commonly if it weren't for tamarisk crowding them out. We have poplar trees. This is Fremont's poplar, uh, Populus fremontii. We have um, mule fat, which is Baccarus salicifolia. We've got willows here, a couple of willow species, which is in the genus Salix. So by, by taking these tamarisk out, we're not hoping to eradicate them. It's kind of just like orcs from Mordor. You're never going to get rid of them all but we are taking them out and preventing them from just establishing these massive monocultures, cutting them at the base, hopefully destroying the adult plants. And then within a couple years, our fondest hope if we can get some rain events, uh, the riparian vegetation, the willows, the populars, the mule fats will come back uh, up in an, uh, just basically through natural ecosystem processes. That's uh, restoration in, in action. Um, so this is phase one, first year of doing it right here. And I'm just going to say one fun fact about tamarisk. Another common name for this is salt cedar, uh, which is in part why it's so invasive. It can grow in all kinds of different water systems, including areas where it's salty. It's a halophytic plant. And so whereas other plants, some native plants can do this, but a lot of other plants cannot grow in salt. It's like drinking salt water. It actually makes you more thirsty. But tamarisk salt cedar can actually grow in salts. And if you lick the leaves, uh, you can taste the salt. I'm not going to do that because I'm already kind of thirsty. Uh, but uh, that's just another one other reason is the niche, the ecological niche that tamarisk is able to inhabit is quite broad. It's a habitat generalist. It prefers these kind of ephemeral washes, but it can grow in all kinds of different soil conditions. And yeah, uh, we're working on one step at a time. You can hear the train here that had to be moved goes right up that way. Uh, for, for railroad fans, uh, but one step at a time we're working on, um, on hammering out the tamarisk here at Phenopsia.